here. So this demarks the front of the second polytunnel. All this, all the way down here, for basically two meters off of the fence, is just gonna be a bed. So we're having a nightmare. We've just come to the nursery, the plant nursery, to pick up a load of seedlings. They don't have any. Given ourselves all this garden and the polytunnel in 10 hours. So if you were buying this at the garden centre, what would you get? Six bags? <laughs> I've got this whole trailer full. I don't see any reason why we still can't get all that done and get this planted tomorrow. Fingers crossed. So we're finally there. We're about to start changing the garden around and installing our garden. So we're, we're just going to run around and have a bit of a chat now with the tape measure and work out what's going where, but I've got a fairly good idea where I think things should go. Yeah, we'll just start making some space. We're going to lose all the shrubs down this side. And... Um, that hedge there is also going to come out and it's going to make the whole garden much, much wider. As I've mentioned before, we've got sunlight, basically everything on sort of that side from about two thirds of the way over, we get full sun. And then on, on that side of the garden is a bit more shaded. So this is the day, it's, uh, it's a midweek and my wife's just come home from work. We're just, we're just having a chat now and working it out. And then over the next few days, we'll start to implement things. Okay, so we've got our plan. So we've set out these electric fence posts, these uh, plastic electric fence posts, and these demark where our polytunnels are gonna go. The polytunnels are gonna sit against this fence and we're gonna leave a little bit of a gap at the back there so we can get into the, uh, into the summer house around this way. So the top polytunnel is gonna sit against that fence and come down to, to this post here. And then the second polytunnel is gonna sit up against it. And the one at the back will have the cover on because again, this is the half of the garden over here behind me that gets all the sun. That's basically gonna be two complete spaces that are just turned to beds inside. And the second polytunnel is just gonna have a net. All this space from, from this post here, so this demarks the front of the second polytunnel, all this, all the way down here, for basically two meters off of the fence, is just gonna be a bed. And we're gonna focus on that. That gives us enough space to get everything in the ground this year, get all our seedlings in. Hopefully we'll have all that ready this weekend. So like I say, it's Wednesday today, Wednesday evening. So we've got Wednesday evening, Thursday evening, Friday evening and Saturday, because I'm working on Sunday foraging. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to, we'll be at a stage where Saturday we can buy our seedlings and put them straight in. That's the plan anyway. We're going with no dig. So um, another advantage of the house move is we've got loads and loads of cardboard boxes left over from the move, which are just on the floor here. These are gonna go on the ground and uh, we'll be compost straight on top of that. That will form our new vegetable beds. Just taking out this current bush. It's the smaller of the two bushes that we want to move. There's some other stuff, obviously, we've got to get rid of, but this one we want to move. And awful time of year for the, from the plant's point of view for us to be doing this. As always, I don't pretend to be an expert, but we're going to give it every chance. The biggest hurdle that we're trying to overcome is that the space we want it to go into isn't there yet. It's where that hedge is that is all overgrown. We're not ready to take that hedge back because once we take that hedge back, we've got no boundary. We need to be able to basically put the new fence line up as soon as we take the hedge out, which we're really not ready to do yet. So we had two options. Basically, we could either just put everything on hold until we're able to do the fence, which we can't afford to do right now, or we can do what we can. And what we're focusing on is getting this stretch of the garden, this side, the side that's the sun side, we're focusing on um, just getting that up and running so we can grow in it. So we're going to be taking some losses, unfortunately. And I mean, this is just one of the plants that we're taking losses on. Look at all these currants that we're, we're just gonna lose. But it was a choice between that or not having this space available for potentially another few weeks. And it's a really critical stage of the season. We wanna get some plants in. So that's the decision we've made. Obviously this plant is trying to do an awful lot at this time of the year. This is when it's trying to get all of its nutrients, put it into that growth of both the foliage and as you can see the fruit, and it's just, it's not gonna cope. So we're gonna cut it right back. I'm not sure how well it's gonna go, but we're gonna ask it for nothing this year, no fruit at all. We'll leave some of the leaves on. Well, I'll show you actually where I'm gonna cut. So it's probably wouldn't, this probably isn't the perfect place to do it. I'm not an expert, but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut it just there and I'm gonna leave these leaves so that it's got something to photosynthesize with and tick over this year and we're gonna take off everything else. So hopefully we're doing what we can to give it the best chance of making it through and then next year it should hopefully come back. We put it in this container here, lined it with cardboard, got lots and lots of soil in there, gonna put some compost in there as well and we're just gonna really heavily water it. 
So uh, that's the plan. So there you go. It's uh, much less of a specimen than it was before, but that's going to give it the best chance, I think, of making it through the summer and into next year. So as you can see, we've left quite a few of these small bits of leaf growth on. I'm going to just take off anything that looks like it's trying to fruit because I'm just, I just want to, I just want it, I want to save the plant the energy that it would put into those fruits and just leave it with some leaf to, like I say, photosynthesize so that it can still get all the energy it needs to recover from what will be a huge shock. Like I say, I'm not an expert. I'm not sure if this is the very best thing I could have done, but um, needs must. So this is a good example of sort of what we're leaving on the plant. Right, so we can move that now, water it, and then onto the gooseberry, which is a real shame, but it's just in the wrong place. Right, so it's about eight o'clock now, and uh, well, hopefully you can see a bit of a difference. We've lost all the shrubs from along this fence line down through here. That big pile at the back there, that's not shrubs, that's the, the shrubs we've actually taken out all piled up. And we've got our two polytunnels in situ. So we've got two polytunnels, you can, but hardly, it's difficult to make them out sometimes because they're just the frames, but this is one at the back here. This is the one that's gonna be covered in. We decided to leave a gap between them rather than access it from the far end or from the other polytunnel. So we can get into it here. It leaves us a little bit of room there that we can maybe make a sort of separate potting shed type area or whatever. We've got room at the back for compost bins. And then this one's gonna be just netted in. And then the idea will be that the vegetable garden will basically just carry on three meters wide, right down to here. And I think that's what we're gonna do this spring slash summer. I don't think, we're, well, we're certainly not at this moment aiming to do any more than that. We're gonna get that done, get all this planted, get up and running so that we can get some crops this year. And then uh, for next year, we'll just see, we'll see how it goes. We've got different ideas what we'll do up that side. We're probably gonna have a, a herb and salad garden down here because it's a little bit more shaded, which would be fine for growing salad in the summer. Anyway, that's, uh, that's it for today. So it's Wednesday evening and uh, I'm gonna put the kettle on, have a coffee, decaf, obviously and then uh, call it a night. Off to work tomorrow, and then when I get home, we will go again, see how we get on. But my plan is, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, so long as I can get the compost here that I want, I'm thinking I can have that all pretty much ready to plant in by the time I go to sleep on Friday night. We'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up now for tonight, and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow. I didn't get anything done yesterday, Thursday, for various reasons, but mostly because I was working in the house again. I had to change the inside of our cistern in our toilet that wasn't flushing upstairs and fit a new latch on one of the doors. A few bits and bobs, nothing too dramatic. But it meant that uh, obviously I didn't get anything done here in the garden last night. That's okay. I'm home a little bit early today. It's nearly half past three, so nothing's changed. I still want to be planting in here tomorrow afternoon and I don't see any big reason why I can't. So what I'm doing at the moment, I'm just coming through with a, a I don't know what you call it. It's a bit like a spade, 
I'll show it you in a second, but it's designed for chopping through roots. So I'm just coming through, taking off any of the foliage, any of the more, what I would call more vigorous, stronger plants that are gonna pose a risk of piercing up through our new no dig bed, taking care of those, leveling things out a little bit. And then I've got a few bags of sand, which are just leftovers, I've got no use for them. So I'm just gonna sprinkle them to as much as anything else, just to get them used up over this whole surface, get it all sort of leveled a little bit, then cardboard. I want to do that in the next hour and a half. Change that. I want to do that in the next 45 minutes <laughs> because at four o'clock uh, I've got to go. I'm meeting someone to go and pick up my compost. I'm getting it from the same people I got it from last time. It's the, uh, basically it comes from the waste recycling. When we all put our green waste out, those who live in the UK will be familiar with the idea of you put your garden waste out and the council collects it. Well, that all gets turned into compost and that's what I'm collecting from the local council and uh, that's gonna form our new bed and I don't see any reason why I can't get all of that done maybe tonight we've got people coming over for dinner so it might be that I only get prepared now and then I have to go off get the compost and I don't get time to actually put any down until tomorrow that's okay because I don't see any reason why we still can't get all that done and get this planted tomorrow fingers crossed so this is the tool I'm using so I'm not sure what it's called, maybe a root breaker or something. It's incredibly strong as long as you're going in straight. It's not designed for levering. So you can't use it like a spade in that way, but we can use it to, basically I'm using it like a really, really powerful hoe. That's a really good way of thinking of it. So we're gonna carry on now, getting the rest of this ready. Okay, so that's all I've got time for today, folks. And uh, what happens now is I'll pull up outside that gate there with my trailer full of compost, wheelbarrow it all in, put it on here, rake it out, and that's when the magic happens. And <laughs> you just, boom, instant garden bed. If you've not seen it before, I will link in the description to a video when I installed one of these on my previous property. And you'll see, I go into a lot more depth and detail then about how you do it and why you do it. But uh, yeah, we are. We're getting there, we're getting there. This weekend, we're planting in this garden. 100%, no doubt about it. Right, I'm gonna go and get my compost and I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow, Saturday. Keep yourself, girls. Morning guys, Saturday morning. So uh, I've gone and got my compost. That's the first thing I wanna show you. But before I even do that, one of the joys of moving house, I've gotta find my tripod. <laughs> I can't remember where it is. So uh, yeah, not everything has a home yet. Now, I spent 30 pounds on this. So if you were buying this at the garden center, what would you get, six bags? <laughs> I've got this whole trailer full, and this is quite deep, as you'll see. So we've moved all the compost, and as you can see, I think we've got just about enough for our top polytunnel there. That's the one with the cover. Once we spread it out, maybe we need a couple of wheelbarrows up there. Might have to leave a little patch of that one. Um, and we've got enough for this top polytunnel, because that's really high. Just here, look, this comes almost up to my elbow. So we've got, you know, plenty here to spread out, I think. But we're going to get more compost anyway as we need it, because we've still got the rest of the bed to carry on, which will continue right the way down to the patio there. So I think, though, the thing, the thing is, 
we were desperate to get some plants in the ground this weekend and this is going to allow us to do it so all we've got to do now is spread that out and put the cover on this polytunnel and then we are ready to plant our tomatoes cucumbers in here and everything else down through here we haven't got the net for this yet i will get that over the next day or two and um yeah the idea is we're planting though so i just want to tell you a few things about what we've done and why we've done it so i've put the cardboard right up to the fence but we're we're keeping the soil off the fence eventually what i want to do is i'll put just a piece of maybe like a four by four post or something down through there which is just going to inhibit some weed growth without rotting the fence we really want to keep the soil off the fence if we can so how it all works the worms are going to love this cardboard and and they'll come up from underneath and start breaking it down along with the mycorrhizal fungi decay fungi and all those kinds of things all the nematodes and everything that are under there we've got a really healthy soil here we found out when we dug out those shrubs partly because the ground's just been untouched and left to do its own thing i think so everything here has been sort of self-mulching in the autumn and rotting back and just feeding the soil the soil has been doing its own thing so we've got a really really healthy soil food web under here i believe so the idea will be now that this cardboard stops all the grass and weeds growing up and this basically is in an ideal world this would be teeming with life if this was our compost that we've done here this would be teeming with life and there's going to be some life in there but how much i'm not sure because we've had such dry weather where i picked it up from i don't know how long it's been sat there and whether it's all dried out and a lot of the life in there might not have made it i just don't know but it is what it is what it is going to have in there is loads and loads of nutrients so if you imagine this is like a little mini cross section of what we're going to have we're going to have maybe six inches of compost like that and that's what we're going to plant in and that's going to have all the nutrients that our seedlings need to get going and by the time they're ready to punch down through this cardboard they'll be strong enough to do that this cardboard will have rotted enough and they'll be strong enough to do that but the plants that are underneath because they haven't got access to this beautiful sunshine that we're having at the moment they're not going to be strong enough to force their way up and they will eventually just die off and that's not the end of the story for them because of course all this grass once it's died off will rot down and feed the soil even more and then eventually what will happen is the soil food web so all of the things that i'm always talking about the worms the bacteria the mycorrhizal fungi the nematodes everything will impregnate through this cardboard once it's rotted down and come up and populate all this and the worms will do their job of just turning everything over we haven't forked anything over here why do the worms job when all you're going to do is destroy that very very delicate balance that ecosystem in the soil that's already doing everything we want it to do to fertilize and make sure that all of our plants have got everything they need now it's it's going to be a two or three year process to get this bed to the state that our beds are in at the last place because that's how long it's going to take to develop all of these bacteria and stuff to the level that we had them at home because this is all new you know this has been effectively a monoculture out here of grass not quite a monoculture there's a few other things in it but mostly a monoculture of grass and obviously we had a strip of shrubs down the edge so we're going to be introducing lots more diversity into this area lots of different families of plants so over time and of course the other thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding organic matter all the time every year so over time this bed will become more and more fertile without adding any fertilizer to it sounds like my kind of gardening now, as I said, we're going to have to get another one load of compost to finish here and we're going to have more than enough. We have another load left over. We're just leaving a pile somewhere, but we're not doing that straight away. I've got a rather embarrassing. I've always got I always get my nose filthy. I don't know why that is, but I've got a rather embarrassing admission for you guys. We actually recycled a lot of our moving boxes. I, I, I don't know what I can put that down to. Just a, a moment of panic, my wife says, because we were just in tiredness. Because, sorry, love delirium she's adding reasons um just because you know we were surrounded by stuff and we needed some space so we ended up recycling a load of our boxes and i don't know why we did that but we did um so we don't have enough after all the moving we've done we've recycled a load of cardboard boxes and now we don't have enough to finish off the bed down there but it is what it is i'm going to go and get some now that's my next project i'm going to flatten this out a little bit get the cover on that top poly tunnel and then uh, then go and get some cardboard boxes then, after lunch, we're going to go and buy some seedlings, aren't we, love? Yes. Sunbathing, Conker? Sunbathing? Yeah, 
go up and over now. So we're having a nightmare. We've just come to the nursery, the plant nursery, to pick up a load of seedlings. They don't have any. They said they, they're really struggling to get hold of them. Of course, with everything we're doing, we're on a, a tight time frame. We're, we're trying to save time by getting seedlings. And we thought we'd come to this nursery. It's the same nursery we've come to in the past. Found it a year or so ago, and I love it. It's a fantastic nursery. Their prices are amazing. And they've got nothing. They've got like four chili plants and some courgette plants that's it which we probably should have picked up but in our panic we left that section and went looking elsewhere and we're on a really tight schedule now because it's 3 20 and we've got to pick up um compost at four o'clock our next lot of compost i've arranged to pick that up today as you can see i've got a load of cardboard ready to go to fill out all our beds and it would have meant we could do all our planting this evening so we're just going to drive around and see what we can find now of course everything shuts at five it's just a nightmare a nightmare i don't know what we're going to do so you can see a few tomato plants among some other plants behind me and i've also got back there a trailer full of compost our second lot of compost so we've now and you can also see a load of cardboard that i picked up so I, earlier on today, I took the, the yew tree that we chopped down and a few other bits and bobs to the tip. And uh, basically I costed a load of people that were dropping off cardboard and uh, grabbed it, got our compost, got our plants, and it's now 20 past four in the afternoon. But we've achieved all of our goals that were reliant on other people. We've achieved everything that involved us being at a certain place at a certain time and everything else. Don't have to worry about garden centre is closing. It was a nightmare when we got to the nursery. I normally use Rocky Mountain Nursery near Wells. And we got there and they had, I think, like six pepper plants and some courgette plants. That was it. And my heart sunk. I went and asked a member of staff and they said, yeah, we're really struggling to get hold of them. We won't have any tomorrow. We won't have any until the end of next week. And I was just like flabbergasted. I didn't know what to do. And then we remembered there was a garden center on our way back towards where we were picking up the compost. So we went in there, they had everything we needed almost, although I don't remember seeing any beetroot there, love, do you? Yeah, I've got beetroot. Oh, you've got beetroot, brilliant. So they had everything we wanted and it just ended up costing us a bit more. Not as much more as we were expecting. We've spent a fair amount of money on compost and plants. We've probably spent around 150 pounds this year we would never normally spend that much and of course every year from here on in even if i wasn't producing my own compost let's say that i was going to just buy in compost every year and we probably will have to buy in some for the next couple of years but even if we're doing that we're only going to need one trailer load because one trailer load is going to add even if we doubled our bed it's going to add a good couple of inches to that whole garden so even if we had to buy a little bit of compost every year and normally we'll obviously grow from seed so realistically we'll probably spend 50 quid a year something like that uh, so this year was a lot more because it was a getting up and running with the new beds but also because we we're too late to sow we're not too late to sow everything and we'll be sowing a lot next weekend one of my jobs is going to be getting a little sewing station set up, a little potting shed or whatever it might be, and do some sewing from the seeds we've already got. Loads of succession sewing and stuff, because all these seedlings, we've got some lettuce seedlings, we've got some uh, dwarf bean seedlings. They're all going to want succession sowings going in after them. So we'll be doing some sowing next week from seed. And I feel like this has really bought us a good month or two because a lot of these plants would have been sown two months ago so we're, we're 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 getting a head start by doing it this way and by the time we go to bed tonight we will have a garden a growing garden that's a good feeling isn't it just move the hens last little section now got everything we need one last push 
So I've just done that thing that every YouTuber hates. There's very little that'll annoy you more. Is uh, we've just installed all this and I thought I was filming it and I wasn't. I thought I had it all on a time lapse and I hadn't pressed record. Never mind. And we're not redoing it. And we're not redoing it, Jackie says. No, we're not. Cool. That was a lot of work. So let's let me show you around. We're basically done. We're ready to sow, ready to plant. So we've got our poly tunnel up here, all set up, ready to go. Our tomato, we've got some tomatoes, peppers, chilies, and cucumbers in here, ready to be planted out. And then this is, this year at least, gonna be our brassica cage. So we've got some uh, purple sprouting broccoli, some, I can't even remember what else, some cauliflower, a few different brassicas in here. And then the rest of this bed, it's going to be a squeeze to get everything in, I think. But we've got, you know, all the usuals. Beans, lettuce, peas, carrots, onions, courgette, beetroot. So, just goes to show what you can do if you, uh, you know, if you've got a few hours. It didn't take a long time. So if you add up all the time, what do we spend? A couple of hours on Wednesday night, two or three hours on Friday, at the most, actually. Probably a couple of hours at the most. So that's four hours plus today. And if you take away the time we spent running around the garden centers and stuff, we've probably done about six hours today. So what's that? 10 hours. So in 10 hours, we've been able to turn around this from what it was all covered in shrubs and just a, you know, completely for our purposes, a useless space. And given ourselves all this garden and the polytunnel in 10 hours. And I'm pretty pleased with that. So. This is going to wrap this video up. This one's going to end now. My wife and I are going to be planting into the night and watering into the night because everything's so dry. All that compost is really, really dry. But uh, I'm really happy with where we are. It's, fr it's Saturday and we have achieved our goals. So thanks for watching everyone. If you've enjoyed this video, please press that like button, leave me a comment down below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already. And I'll speak to you on the next one. Cheers guys.